Howdy. I'm the old ranger, and Death Valley's my stamping ground. Many's the tale of adventure I'm going to tell you about the Death Valley country. True stories, mind you. I can vouch for that. This story goes back more than a hundred years to the great California gold rush of 1849. In the fall of that year, a small group of pioneers, too impatient to take the long loop southward from Salt Lake City to the Santa Fe Trail, left the main caravan and struck out due west. It was country no white man had ever crossed. But this shortcut, they figured, would save them a good 500 miles. And anything that would get up to the rainbow's end quicker was worth the gamble. Among those who broke away, and by so doing was destined to go down in history, was a bunch of adventurous fellows who called themselves the Jayhawkers. Isabel Bennett, a Wisconsin farmer, his wife, Sarah, and their family. James R. Kane, a former storekeeper from the South, his son, Charlie, and his wife, Virginia. And a young frontiersman by the name of Lewis Manley. How about a drink of water for me, Virgie? What's the trouble, Rhinosin? Well, some of us up front don't like the looks of this country. Two days without a blade of grass. We're turning back. How many wagons? Seven. And I advise the rest of you to follow suit. Well, it's ticking. Aren't we, Sarah? Whatever you say, Isabel. The country is getting rougher. Perhaps we'd be wise not to go any farther. Well, we've come this far. We might as well keep going. Or I'm turning back. We're keeping on, Mr. Carverwell. Half of the cussed outfit's mine, Mr. Fish. Yep, but I own the front half, and all you can do is follow. Well, pass the way along. Anybody who wants to join Rhinoson is free to do so. Every man makes his own decisions. That is, with the exception of Calverwell and Fish. Well, good luck to you. Good luck to you. So long. signs of water, almost nothing for the animals to feed on. Then just when things began to look grim indeed, they came to a life-giving spring. This is how you do her, Charlie. Uh, thanks. See? She's easy. That's a mighty good whip you got there, Nick. I'll buy it from you. Ah, uh, she ain't for sale. Ain't no amount of money it'd make me part with this here whip. Instead of showing off, why aren't you helping me fix this harness, Mr. Fish? Because my half don't need fixing, Mr. Coverwell. Oh, 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 oh,
and I can't get near enough to him to fix it. Here, let me do it for you. Whoa. Steady. 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 Whoa. 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 I don't see why he stands so still for you. He knows Lewis isn't afraid of him. Is there anything you can't do, Lewis? It's all what you used to. That's right. Supposing he had to run a store now. <laughs> no. I couldn't stand that. Trapped behind a counter. I don't want anything between me and the rest of the world. It's mighty handy sometimes. I'll miss it. Well, I'll take this back to Mr. Bennett. The thing that puzzles me is how such a tender foot as him, if you'll excuse my saying so, ever set out on such a journey in the first place. I reckon I encouraged him. I like the things money can buy. Clothes and fun. I suppose you think that's being vain, silly. Oh, no, ma'am. If I had a wife like you, I'd want her to like pretty things. I'd see that she got them. children need rest, Ed. We all do. Well, us jayhawkers are getting impatient. We don't want to waste any more time. So we're pushing on. You can't leave us. Our food supply is getting mighty low. And the country up ahead don't look good. Sure. No reason to hold them up because of us with families, Arcane. How about you, Manley? You're unattached. Thanks, Ed. But I'm sticking with the Arcanes. And the Bennetts. How about you, fellas? Yeah. No. I'm traveling fast as I care to already, Mr. Culverwell. Well, now you're going to travel faster, Mr. Fish. My half is staying here, Mr. Culverwell. And mine's going on, Mr. Fish. Even, even if I have to cut the dead blame wagon in half. Well, that suits me fine, Mr. Culverwell. Well, maybe we'll get rid of this dead blasted argument. Arguing? Will you listen to the big wing gentleman? Why, <laughs> Where would either one of you get with half a wagon? You might as well saw your animals in half. Well, which is it? I guess I got no choice but to stick with the ship. <laughs> and so the little party reduced now to three wagons continued on its way over the unknown trail. And with every mile, Every yard, the going got rougher and drier. It was Christmas Day, 1849, when their wagons creaked slowly down a wash through a mountain canyon and came out into a narrow sink. The four of which from a distance looked to be lakes of blessed water, but which proved to be beds of burning salt. Across these flats, 300 feet below sea level, this little party crawled. Mile after agonizing mile, their eyes and hopes fixed on the distant hills on the other side. No longer could they make 10 miles a day, or nine, or eight. Loads were lightened, possessions discarded. when they finally reached them, were as unfriendly as those they had left behind. And it now took four animals to do the work of two.
Can't go no farther. It's a dead end, all right. We never should have taken that shortcut. Look where it's led us, straight into a trap. We should have turned back. We should have turned back. I wanted to. I wanted to. Aye, quiet. There's a way out of every place. We'll find it. One thing is certain. You can't abandon your wagons. Not with women and children in the party. You folks stay here, and I'll scout for a way through. You know how much food we got left? We'll pool it. Cut our rations down still further. And have faith. I will lift mine eyes into the hills. From whence cometh my help? My, my help, help cometh, cometh from, from the Lord, Lord which made heaven and earth. earth. The Lord, the Lord shall preserve thy going, going out and thy coming, coming, coming in from this, this time, time forth. forth. And even, and even forevermore. forevermore. Thy coming in, and thy going out. Amen. After two days of scouting, Manley made his report. Well, there's no way through it. We'll have to go back to the floor of the valley and go around. You can't pull the wagons without horses. What happened to them? Broke loose last night. We tried to track them, but it was too rocky. Only thing left to do is for somebody to go out on foot and try to make it to the settlement and get some food and help. Yeah, well, we'll draw straws to see who goes. <sighs> Never mind the straws. I'll go. Isabel, no. I won't let you. No, I've never interfered before. Ever since we started on this terrible journey, I've taken what came, done my part. But this is too much. Martha, our little girl, She's dying. If you leave her now, you'll never see her again. Sarah, please. I'll go. I knew he would. And I'll go. You? Why not? Two would be better than one, Arcane, but... Oh, I don't think you'd ever make it. If you can, I can. But, James, you're in no condition. I'm as fit as anybody. When do we start? Right now. But remember one thing, I won't be slowed up. Make a note of that peak yonder. Be a landmark to guide us on our way back. She could only see you now. Well, 
six, seven. Seven days they've been gone. How long you figure we can hold out? I told Manley ten. Fifteen at most. Martha any better? Why should she be? Look at her. Time like this. Why not, if it takes her mind off things? Sarah. There's no sin in liking pretty clothes. I wish now I'd had more, when I had the chance. And more good times. I'm hungrier than that, Mama. Give it my share. Get the same, Enoch. I said more. Put that whip down. I'll trade it with you. For a hunk of meat. Just a little piece of meat. Next. It's a good whiplash. But made of the finest rawhide. Feel it. And try it. Sorry, Enoch, there can be no exception. Well, then give me my share of what's left right now. I'm striking out on foot. You've lost your rudder, matey. Don't be a fool. How far do you think you can get by yourself? He never even argued. Give me my share. I'm going with him. Determination driving them, Manley and Arcane struggled on. Uh, uh, you could have made it without me. I doubt it. Funny. I used to be scared of dying, but I'm not anymore. Except for, for Virgie and, and the boy. <sighs> May he have mercy on him. Do you think that he has any part in this? Yeah, he's up there. <laughs> Let's get as close to him as we can. You'll be sure to find this. Oh. 
21 days, Papa. Twenty-one days. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them, because they trust in him. With horses and a pack mule laden with supplies, Manly and Arcane started back. But the horses gave out all too soon. So once more they traveled afoot, day after day, till at last they reached the mountains that formed the western rim of the dreaded valley. If only they weren't too late. She's still breathing. Just. I never knew folks swelled up when they were starving. Her little body and her hands like claws. Ace, no! Martha's dying, Sarah. She's got to have nourishment. We've got three children to think of, not just one. We need the critters to take us out. Out? We'll never get out. If they was coming back, they'd be here by now. Oh, don't lose faith, Asa. Wait. I've waited all I can stand. You're not going to kill him. Your boy needs food, too. I said you're not going to kill him till Sarah says so. Please, Asa. for bringing him back. Shucks, ma'am. He brought himself back. He's a real man. this peak is called today. An enduring symbol of the courage, faith, and loyalty that brings men through. And that is a true story of how Death Valley got its name. 